A friend of mine reached out to me saying, We need to solve space exploration. Plus, Cross Torio 2, one of Factorio's longest mods. I agreed and we booted up, but there's a problem. Factorio's biggest update ever, Space Age, will be releasing soon. It could drop a year from now or tomorrow, and when it does, everybody, including me, will be playing it. Will we complete our 200 to 1000 hour Factorio mod, or will our save file be abandoned and forgotten? Welcome to a race against time and space. This is part two, go see part one. If you haven't, last time we cleared the burner phase and it got a main belt going with some basic automation, including inserters, belts, assembling machines, basic defenses, and most importantly, gaslit an entire Discord server. I continue to fiddle with this intersection and it continues to be an eyesore. At least it uh, kinda works. Kinda. These greenhouses make wood, which make coke, which makes steel, which is the last major resource to make it onto the main belt. Just like in real life, the military budget only goes up, and I've begun the long process of reinforcing the perimeter with turrets. Waz has been key in this department, identifying and walling up choke points, and does he need help? No, I'm just trying to kill a nest, and there's like three nests right next to- oh fuck, I'm dead. Oh, rip car. Oh, maybe I'm not dead. I can't kill the nests, but it should be fine. I just got a saving private bot here. Come on, bot. Let's go. He's fine. I got a main belt to expand. I'm so itchy to get trains, but... For this lake that's getting hit by pollution now, if you want to hit that one. A lot of side quests pop up. He's referring to some biters that somehow spawned on our side of this giant lake. Although they have two bases, it's nothing that this car can't handle. And on my way back, I get an achievement for hitting a tree. Thanks, Woob. I kind of wanted to make a driving montage, but all the songs I wanted to use were copyrighted. Really sad I couldn't be the first Factorio video with a Tupac song in it. Anyway, we're entering the resource shortage whack-a-mole part of the game. First on the list is copper, and thankfully we have this giant mine to the north of the base that is close enough to be belted in. Well, technically anywhere is close enough. I've definitely had some friends make a four lane of slow yellow belts that covered 10 miles and just accepted it. At that point, it was like mining out the entire mine onto belts, which somehow was impressive and disappointing. I'm also gonna try and mine out the copper ore we still have close to the base first. Noise, Slade, noise. Needs a beauty. Duh. Based. Let me get the LTN, which probably we can wait on. Life is suffering, and suffering is magic. Are we out of power again? We are. Nice. Yeah, so we have LTN, or the Logistic Train Network mod enabled, which I'll talk about later. Uh, I think my next thing is going to be trying to get solar up as soon as possible. Oh, core miner, core miner. Um, that's holy shit. No, that's, we can get that soon, actually. We need concrete, and then we can get it. Okay, there's like three right next to us. It's right south of the iron ore mine. Yeah, core mining! I know, right? I've been waiting to set this up. I guess we could just process it here and then train in all the other ones. Also, we need to figure out where some good choke points are to wall off the buyers, because that's going to be an issue soon. Dude, I can't tell you how ready my body is for the expansion. I mostly just want, like, the, the turbo high-quality building stuff. That's going to be, like, the best Gamba ever. Recycle everything until you get, like, a, a Tier 3 legendary assembler. I can't wait for the new planets. That's also based as fuck. So, as I was saying, core mining combines two of my favorite words, infinite and free. Beams, Gromit. You mine core fragments out of a hole in the ground, which creates 10 different outputs. God damn it, I have 31 undergrounds again. Do you also have an odd number of undergrounds? Uh, yeah. Okay, well here, you just take that one. That's the, literally the worst thing. Oh, we need uh, oil processing, okay. I'll talk more about core mining when we get to it. It's just good to be primed on. There are like four vanilla Factorio rules that it breaks, so it's weird, but also awesome. Here we have multi-cylinder engines, which are needed for trains. Also, Wazi expanded the labs. I will say, I'm not a huge fan of how much fucking resources it takes to make loaders. I get it, I just don't like it. Yeah, loaders being expensive might be a problem. Yeah, a core miner out on the little island in the lake there. Oh yeah, just what we need. Core mining with underwater welding. Oh no, logistics system is really far into the tech tree. Like that's that's well into space tech. Big set. We just have a train go pick up a bunch of different resources and have one resource on each car. And we just have it stop and it just unloads everything. <laughs> what we end up doing is so much more brain dead than that. She blinded me with science. And here are trains finally. 
beams growing. Yeah, you're right. Steel beams do take a long time to make, and we should start sooner rather than later. I'll expand the steel smelting. It was so fucking satisfying, though, just seeing, like, stuff happening, you know? Yeah, when you zoom out, it really is incredible. I get so caught up in accomplishing one task after another, it can be daunting thinking about all the steps, and it can be hard to take a break and just smell the roses. Sounds like a you problem, my guy. Well, you can find me in my grave, I guess. Once again, the ratios of iron to steel here are way off, but I am far too lazy to fix it. We need five iron machines for one steel. Well, we can fix the ratios once we get trains, so that's fine. Sounds like a job for future us. God, we need to pave more. I'm stealing all the steel off the belt for the time being so I can make steel furnaces, which are steel better than stone furnaces. Based. When you're late into a Factorio run, it can be easy to forget what it's like to not have bots delivering supplies for you. The trips back to supply chests add up in a sneaky way. They don't take that long, but your inventory is only so big. I'm setting up a lot of concrete, which is hardly used in vanilla, but it is very important in K2SE. It requires water, which naturally pushes me toward pipe spaghetti, and I just siphon off from this innocent offshore pump. I was going to use the offshore pump that we use for making steam, but funnily enough, Waz ratioed the water pipe to boiler throughput. I can't say I've ever solved fluid throughput through any means other than more pipe. I didn't even think about throughput here. Just started building the Keystone XL2 and assumed it could meet concrete's demand. It even makes its way onto the main belt, which uh, might be a first for everyone. But there we have it, the water finally can get to the concrete. I believe this is our first material that we can't make by hand. First thing we're going to do with it is make that core miner. Once we shove enough into this box, at least. Meanwhile, Waz is setting up oil processing, the second material we can't process by hand. As promised, here is the core miner. By far the weirdest thing we've come across so far. It uses like 500 times more electricity than any other building we have access to, mines an infinite amount of core fragments at 15 ore per second, which require a new building called the Ore Crusher. You have to put them at least one tile away from each other. To process, which outputs 10 resources, six solids, iron, copper, stone, coal, uranium, and rare metals, rare metals are new, and four fluids, water, crude oil, mineral water, and pyroflux. Mineral water and pyroflux also being new. Yeah, this thing feels like it's in the wrong game. Do we have so much fucking oil to the east? Do you see that? Well, that's good. We are playing a version of the mod with slower but infinite crude oil wells, so combined with free core miner profit, I'm not worried about running out of oil anytime soon. But more freedom fluid certainly helps kickstart the process. Anyway, the core miner is a valuable asset for generating most of the basic resources. Because there are six different solid outputs, I'm using splitters with filters enabled to isolate them on separate belts. Uranium and rare metals are not needed right now, so they're going to be stuffed into a warehouse, which brings up another strange aspect of the core miner. The main challenge isn't harnessing the resources with any type of efficiency, it's to make sure that any one output resource does not clog it up. It is now apparent why these massive warehouses are so helpful in this mod. Fluids also get their version of a warehouse in the giant fluid tank. Pipes are easier to spaghetti around than belts, so it's as easy as slapping down the massive tanks and pretending like the fluids don't exist. Unfortunately, there isn't a great way to set priority for fluids. For instance, burning all the core mined oil before you burn oil from other sources, so long-term fluids are actually a little harder to manage than solids. I plan to just shove them into more tanks. I am not a cop. But I will cop a feel. Erp. I will say handling connecting all these pipes in the right way is pretty satisfying. Reminds me of that old pipe game from the 90s where you had to connect pipes together in the correct way before the water got to each pipe section. Pro tip, the core miner is so fast that mining into a chest and then handling the output from the chest allows the core miner to go faster than mining onto a belt like in normal mining. Okay, where's the water? 
Is it going to go in this one here? Thankfully, Waz actually has a use for the water, and I don't have to worry about flushing it. Water has an output is kind of useless because you can get an infinite amount of it from lakes, and if you have water fill... We are low, very low on power now. Why are we so low on power? Are we out of water or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the core miner takes 50 megawatts. So. Yeah, that's like 500 assemblers. Oh, uh, you can use the pyroflux and feed that back in to make power. Oh, this is great. We just have coal right here for my plastic production. Ugh. Our power chair looks like my Robinhood account. Early oil processing in this mod really sucks. You can only make petroleum and all the goodies that come from light and heavy oil have to wait until blue science, which is like an entire vanilla playthrough away. Well, we're almost done with research, so they're, until we get blue science or mill science. Meanwhile, I spaghettied some red belts, which are a huge help. I remember first making red belts like, what's the point? The resources will get there eventually. So where do you want to put the train depot? Are we going to do double-headed or do you want to do single-headed trains? Well, it takes up way less room, though, because you don't need... Ah, the great train debate. Do you have more throughput with the double-headed or the single-headed? I'll give you that because you have an extra train car. Shift B? Yeah. Okay, so we entered into a Blueprint Sandbox, which is a mod that gives you infinite items to play around with and doesn't affect the real game. I kept all the footage and sped it up because I wanted to give you the authentic experience of going into a debate club, being assigned the topic of trains, and being locked in a room up against Thomas the Tank Engine. He literally lives on the tracks. What are you going to say? Why are you even trying? Just get out of there. Despite starting on the floor in a chokehold, for some reason I stayed in the ring for 30 minutes. Basically, I wanted single-headed trains because they are simpler, and I have a hard time understanding the implications of rail signals with double-headed trains, but double-headed trains can do everything that single-headed trains can do and more, so we don't lose anything, plus get the added flexibility of smaller train stops. This wasn't meant to be grading on Waz or anything, it's just the price of defeating me in verbal combat. Me muting your entire explanation and talking over it passive-aggressively. I'm so happy we went with it though, he's 100% right and the train designs we use later are super cool. You bastard. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I just thought the timing there was funny. For some reason I'm setting up this stone mine by hand despite already showing that I have a blueprint for a mine. I'm gonna start paving the world. Stone is going to be the first resource that gets exported on trains though, so big hype. The first thing I always do with red belts is upgrade my iron smelting and main belt. Red belts are made exclusively out of iron and iron byproducts, so more belt literally equals more belt. Back to the stone, these crushers will turn it into sand, which can also be made into glass. I was going to put this onto a train, but Waz is actually currently building stone processing at a different train stop. Fortunately, the main belt is hungry for some sand, so I just route this over to the main belt, and this will end up helping us for quite a while, so it was not totally in vain. Behind the scenes, Waz and I actually build up our communication skills quite a lot. Major accidents like this are becoming less frequent, and we have organically found ways of not duplicating each other's work without even trying. <laughs> there's, a, there's a nice yawn for you. Do I want popcorn? Pop. Low calorie. Popcorn or popcorn's probably the healthy option. Waz has especially gotten good at announcing when he's going to stuff his face. Uh, poor Waz. Oh shit, well I- Oh god, I burnt the fuck out of that because I wasn't looking at it. Cool. It's cool to see that communication is a skill just like any other. You might suck at it right now, but that doesn't mean you can't practice and gradually suck less over time. The train blueprint you're looking at is only possible using double-headed trains. You may notice it doesn't go all the way through, and therefore we can stuff way more train stops in a smaller space. Also, I put the blueprint in a blueprint book, which I highly recommend for rails. All right, stops for all three of the things are set up. You scared the shit out of me with your friend there. My friend? Oh, you mean the biter from the Pokeball? He's guarding the uh, concrete. Yeah, I don't even know what mod it is, but you start with a Pokeball that summons a friendly big biter. I don't know why it's there or if I can like catch more biters, but I dropped like 120 hours into Pal World in the first two weeks, so I'm not super itchy to find out. <laughs> And here's the first section of our two-way twain twacks. We drive on the left side of the road because trains actually have chirality in the sense that signals will be placed on the inside or outside of the rails based on which side of the tracks you drive on. 
I don't know if that's exactly the right way to use chirality, but I really wanted to use it. So if I'm wrong, I'm prepared to be burned down by all the physicists in the comments. Sorry, I'm just stuffing my face with popcorn right now. I'm not really doing anything. Steel furnaces are twice as good as stone furnaces. So I start making them down here so that we can come and grab them in the future when we start ramping up our smelting. Now that we have trains, it's actually an interesting choice whether or not we want to make things on the belt or if we want to make things on the tracks. Dude, I love how the core miner just completely fucks our power. I configure this planner to upgrade any yellow belt, underground, or splitter to red that I drag over with it. I find it to be helpful to manually set what upgrades you want to do so that you can drag over something and know that you're not requesting a double upgrade, which will blink yellow for the rest of time. Whatever work the bots can help with is appreciated, even if they are very slow. Upgrading this intersection feels like a war crime. Thankfully, this coal patch is running out, so its days are numbered. You can also set upgrade planners to upgrade assemblers, inserters, miners, and anything else that has upgrades. But back in my day, we had to do all this by hand. We didn't have any fancy green paper to command the bots. You might have a hard time appreciating this. <clears throat> that stone we mined earlier is going to travel upstream of the belt and come back and make stone bricks. Every time I make a main belt, I have resources that flow upstream of it, and I wonder how did I get here? <laughs> I still haven't realized that Waz is already setting this up, but filtration plants turn stone into quartz, which can be smelted into silicon. This is gonna make so much fucking sand, dude. 75 sand per red belt of stone. Two red belts and a yellow belt of, of sand per st red belt of stone. This second train stop almost on top of this core mining patch might look a little wasteful, but core mining has diminishing returns. Additional core miners have slower mining speeds as well as causing other core miners to mine slower too. This is what our trains look like and somehow three cargo wagons is optimal. I know it looks cursed, but a single train can pull up to four other wagons and still reach top speed, so... Fast loaders take 50 fucking red chips. Ugh. I don't like this. Do we just use fucking stack inserters to unload trains, man? I've been referring to how expensive loaders are and their best use is loading and unloading trains through warehouses. And then the town rabble stumbled in. Oh, we got them. How's a uh, cat for you? Goodbye, focus. It's very based. Pack, pack, pack. I drove to work today. It was very nice. I missed the office. What's wrong with me? I use combinators like this to signal when trains should come and go. Five out, five out of ten needs more skibbity toilet. Bro. And the biters want to join the call too. Sure, yeah, why not? Skibbity toilet is a machinima web series. See also generation gap. <laughs> Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> Bro, I've been gapped so hard. Oof. Yes. Time left to me standing there doing nothing for, well, eating a meeting popcorn for half an hour. We're not actually using that much iron right now, so I'm stuffing a bunch of iron into this chest and trying to prioritize the iron that we do mine from the core miner first. Yep, yep. And then it's time to upgrade all of the belts from the core miner. Uh, so Well, have fun. Don't die. I mean, I didn't think it was that dangerous, but thanks. The number, number go up. For all you rooting for Trooper to come back, which I think is just one person, let's just say he hasn't retired yet. This mod is so complicated that newcomers understandably have a hard time being useful. I researched literally everything, dude. I mean, I've been like AFK for at least 25% of our entire playthrough. Just eating things. Oh, I'm actually out of out of cliff explosives, big sad. Okay, uh, what was I doing? I was, I made... Oh, I, I did a little tiny automation of uh, floaters, by the way. Which warehouse are we using? Okay, I say we use this one because this one's bigger. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's two different warehouses and I used both and uh, don't do that. We, so we need stone unloading here. Then I crush the s stone to make sand. And then we have we have sand load here. Well, yeah, we need... So we need... We still need the filtration plants over here to make the, the quartz. Where are these little shits coming from? Okay, where... Dude, they literally are just like spawning out of the ground. Like, how did they get here? Yo. Yo. 
Yep. What did you do? What did I do today? Yeah, what'd you do today? Uh, bullshit. Uh, apparently that's not normal. I didn't, yeah, basically drive to a stranger's house and hang out with five strangers, um, which is cool. It was a lot of fun. Called to people. A what now? Um, called group. Um, very, uh, middle of nowhere. And so there was a cult of... Yeah, there's, so there's basically nothing to do. Um, and power dynamics. I don't understand that power dynamics. I don't uh, explain everything to you. But look, I don't. I don't. It's not everybody. Well, that's kind of cursed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. Okay. Reading the dictionary. I see. My Oppenheimer Beach tests. Um, golf course, golf course, man with concrete mixer. Fuck. Right. Cringe. Cringe. And I'm just like, bro. Bro. Make back my sad. Okay. Wait, dick butt? What? If they require belts to make them, they are they are belts. Despite the literal circus between my ears, I was able to make better bullet indicated by red food coloring. Playing the worst Halo out of all of them. Ooh, Halo four. Yeah. Halo Wars two. Hey. I haven't played Halo Wars <laughs> two yet, but I'd like to. These bullets are more expensive, requiring steel, which reminds me that we haven't found another iron mine, and the one we're working with is under four hundred k. He's not making it back. He's going in the oven. Bones in the oven. I mean, I'm not good with numbers either. The last mine I consider in our base is this coal mine, and our core miner has been wreaking havoc on our power supply, so I want to upgrade this. <laughs> oh. Sees you wearing a sombrero comes so and starts stabbing. There's a pretty big gap between steam power and solar power, so although we have exited the burner phase, we still need quite a lot more coal. Demand's gonna skyrocket after I turn on the sand factory over here so what are y'all up to Victorio. yeah because that means there's enough population and there's a lot of rich people traveling speaking of solar it eats up quite a lot of steel so i end up trying to expand our steel i promise i have nothing to do with all these text plates you see everywhere I think it's Waz's only way of communicating with you directly. Oh, really? He's like, please let me out of this video. Oh, we got hit. Yeah, we got hit by a meteor. Yeah, what would a space exploration mod be if you couldn't get hit by a meteor? Just add that to the pile, I guess. You can prevent them from damaging structures, but you need a bunch of meteor turrets, which don't cover that much area each. Plus, oh, are we out of iron again? Yeah, well, I mean, we got trans, so we just need to go find one. Um, where is another iron mine? Coal? I don't see any iron. Well, we might need to go do an expedition. Uh, we're gonna get attacked from the south again pretty soon here. I think we're very happy you have these multi-cylinder engines on the, uh, the line, making it very easy to make filtration plants. The meteor hit was the side of the factory, so, uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Cream. It's cream. Cream's oh, made with cream. Yeah, you cream. Whip cream. We handle turnarounds using roundabouts. I'll, I'll get the turnaround. Was handles turnarounds. Oh, here comes the train. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at it go. Look at it go. And there it goes for a successful train ride. Now let's stand. And now we can finally start ascending to become the trainocracy that we've been dreaming of. I don't know why, but this is giving me like insane deja vu. Yeah, every time I play Factory. I'm like, didn't I do this 10 years ago? Jedi. Jedi. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm going to be like in the parking garage. I, I walk by and I'm going to be like, Jedi. Do it. We got sand. We got, I got quartz. I... Uh, and I need to get sulfur up. All right, all right. That's great and all, but the southern border isn't going to defend itself. For our outposts, we plan to use a bullet train or like a train of bullets, I guess is how you'd say that. You know the doge? That's like the um, tiny weak looking one. Beams. Yeah, apparently he died. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, yeah, this video's no. from August. What? Fuck God. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Bro. I know it's hard nice. to hear. Yeah. Only had cats die on the end of our own dogs. I didn't think they died. That really sucks. Yeah, Never were. died. Just got tired of politics. He ascended to being a pure energy, and now he lives in the network equipment in the capital. Like, more traffic. Bring me more traffic. Oh, here yeah, except it's real, but it was just to keep John McCain alive, like the emperor for 40k. You know, he like sacrifices a million children. Yeah, he's the reason the internet keeps working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Al Gore. It's like, I invented the internet. It's a series of tubes. Yeah, well, uh, we'll know how it turns out in, uh, I don't know, either at like 2 a.m. or tomorrow. 2 a.m. Turn, turns out you're just making chicken and biscuits. <laughs> I mean, I hope that's what it tastes like. Oh. Dude, I really want to know, like, what flavoring powder those, like, you know, the chicken crackers, the chicken biscuits use. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That shit's cracker Probably, I think it's the stuff from the ramen noodles. Yeah, yeah. Some, some, some mixture of, like, MSG and artificial, like, beef flavor. 3D print. Maybe some goldfish? Okay. Well, uh, we're defended. But, All right, uh, we have sulfur. We have the technology. 
dead, I guess. Yep. Oh man, oh. I just took the lid off of my Dutch oven in the oven, and it smells like uh, like buttery puff pastry. Oh, oh my god, it's like soybean oil or something. It was powdered fats. Yeah, it's soybean oil. It's not real fat. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make the bread. So this one um, is a. Landfill is very expensive, requiring 50 stone each, but I need it for a very special project. Bro, yeah. I catch myself watching trains pretty often. It's hard not to. You do have to talk to strangers. No, you actually don't. Stranger danger, don't listen to him. One by one, we're knocking necessities off the list. Right here are cliff explosives, which we have run out of and are sorely needed. One of the updates that Space Age will bring are smart cliffs or cliffs that generate in such a way that you might not always want to blow them up. I really like this idea and can't wait to play around with it a little bit. Come play Halo with me? No. Fuck. As it stands, we're looking to pretty much destroy every cliff on the planet. What Halo are you guys playing? I was just seeing if anyone wanted to play. I'll play. Oh wait, he's in a party, but he's not. Oh god, he's in my. God, he's in my house. <laughs> oh god. I really like that previous sequence because it sounds like my friend left the Discord and then invaded my game as a biter. So these biters won't shut the hell up, but I've located the prize that I've been waiting for, the thing that I've been stockpiling all of the landfill for. <laughs> yeah. It's like really, really unfortunate timing. And you're hearing yeah. that voices. I'm back. That wasn't enough. Oh, when, when, did, when did I cut out for you guys since I went back to the... To yeah, the yeah. yeah. Never, came, never came back. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. Went to check in his oven, then he never came back. Yep, we turned this side of the lake into a parking lot. Best part is the locals don't mind at all. This bridge is going to be used for trains to get over to this giant coal patch. You can see that it's really close to the top of the lake, so it's highly unnecessary. It would have been way faster to go above the lake, but I can't resist the land bridge. I always dream about a train flying across the tracks, guns a-blazing, shooting biters as it crosses over, and just when it's about to get overwhelmed, it tactically retreats back under the bridge, creating a choke point for all the biters, and then they get obliterated by reinforcements coming from behind. It literally never happens like that, but I like to imagine that one day it will. So for now, this is what we're going to spend all of our stone on, filling in this lake. I love these intersections. They're like roundabouts, but also through ways, but sometimes they're also just intersections and sometimes all through. Why yeah. is there no coal? Ah, uh, yes, the core miner. No, I mean, there's like actually just no coal being mined, though. Why were we out of coal, though? Don't be sad, be glad. All right, power is good for now, but we're going to hightail it on making this coal mine. Good. Okay. So I set up more landfill drinking straight from the source this time. We're on a timer and we gotta act like it. Literally off by one. There we go. The other blueprint I've added to my book is literally just the two rails spaced apart at the correct distance. First, we gotta hook this up to the train network, then we can start construction on the mine. Hey, do we have those estimates of how long this is gonna take? Just a year. Great, thanks. I'll circle back to you in a year. I really should have blueprinted this intersection. It's off center and Waz is going to kill me when he finds out. I've been using this mine blueprint a lot and it really is the way to go. It's so much faster, even if it doesn't perfectly fit all the resources that are on the ground. Also may or may not have been listening to brain power this whole time. It makes me kind of sad. Some meme songs are so good and you hear them a bunch and then they're like gone forever after that. Anyway, the third installation in our train blueprint book is this roundabout intersection. I think roundabouts are underused for trains. The width makes them flare out, which I imagine can be problematic for certain factory designs, but I think it looks a lot better than the normal two lane intersections I see. They look really cluttered. Fast as fuck, boy. We're going to be using a ton of warehouses, which take 100 steel and 100 steel beams to make each, so. <laughs> Killing frenzy, fuck, I'll take it. While we can make them in our inventory, it takes forever, and I'm shifting that burden onto the factory. Now that we have a strong foundation of rails up, we can actually drive trains around to where we need to go. They're really hard to steer, okay? 
It's much easier to set an automatic route to a train stop that you have down, but are you really gaming if you're not using upside down tank controls? Also, we reuse train stop names, so if I tell it to take me to coal mine, it might take me to some coal mine was just set up. Unlike in vanilla, the standard distance from storage to train is two because two loaders are necessary for out or input. One to unload from the warehouse and one to load onto the train. We don't have any loaders right now because they're so damn expensive, but thankfully Bob's inserters allows us to use fast inserters to do this job over the gap. They're much slower than loaders, but they do work. I added warehouses to this blueprint because 99% of the time this is exactly how I'm going to want to make it. Another pro tip, if there are things in a blueprint that you don't want, you can paste it down and then delete those things from the blueprint and re-blueprint it. Run from now, first shot, no, fourth shot, no, fifth shot, okay, run. Oh, I'm dead, sorry. I got a running right, that's fine. Hell yeah, it was a good run. Driving. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got a pretty big lake there. Thankfully, Waz has been exploring this whole time. Not at the bottom. No, I'm just looking for bot choke points that we can wall off. Fighters can't move across water, so Waz is looking for small natural gaps in the bodies of water surrounding our base to wall off so we have less surface area to worry about. We have fairly good natural geography in the south, which I'm happy about, but in the north, there's a bit more ground to defend. I plan to drop off coal over here in the west, which requires me to disassemble a lot of old defense structure. I'm just plowing all the shit out of the way. Excuse me, coming through. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I just put it in the banneton like five minutes ago. So do you, you bulk ferment in the banneton? Or you know, rise before I bake? Yeah. Um, it only bulk fermented for like an hour and 40 minutes. Did it rise so a lot? 30 minutes and I'm gonna go preheat the oven and I'll just put it in whenever the oven's ready. I'm gonna go cut a slice. It was around this time that I realized Race Against Time and Space abbreviates to rat ass. And I think that's a good summary of everything we've built so far. We're going to be reusing train stop names so this and every other coal unload will be named coal emoji coal unload. This Classic. bread does not taste like beef. This is an easy way to let one train handle all coal deliveries. It's very good. I put some carry gold on it too. Oh. Mm. Damn. Yeah, fresh out of the dude, fresh out of the oven an hour ago. Um. Once again, the name of the game here is to prioritize mining the coal close to the base and the coal from the train will fill in the rest of demand. We found ourselves in a weird spot though. Trains are our preferred way of transporting resources, but our main belt infrastructure already exists and is robust. It feels a little strange, like we should be directly switching to trains, but there are so many things that would need to be updated that we would need to support our legacy code. During this in-between phase, the trains feed the old main belt that provides the building blocks to develop our train-based economy. Thankfully, this plays into the strengths of trains. Their high throughput and speed allow them to supply many different train stops with resources. This means that the main belt coal train stop isn't going to limit throughput for future coal stops. And even if it does, our production and infrastructure allow us to easily create and integrate another coal train into the network to help meet demand. Best of all, train stops are easy to set up and take down so you don't end up with the spaghetti complexity debt that belts might push you toward. In the absence of loaders, I am once again using fast inserters. Despite their name, they're basically the slowest way to load a train. Supplying locomotives with fuel is an interesting challenge that pushes your builds in certain directions. For example, this coal mine has the advantage of fueling locomotives from the same coal that it mines. But other train stops aren't as lucky. Unfortunately, you can't just cram iron ore or glass into a locomotive and expect it to run. The Logistic Train Network mod is one way to interrupt a train and send it to get fuel whenever it needs it, but comes with the overhead of actually using the mod, which I find fairly complicated, although I haven't delved into it very deeply. The Space Age update will add these interrupts directly into the game to make fueling trains easier by using a single train stop for fueling, which I think is a great addition. 
I don't think it was necessary. Fueling trains is a cool, open-ended problem that forces you to come up with a solution, and the less sophisticated the solution, the more wasteful it is. On the other hand, telling a train to go get fuel when it needs it feels like a natural progression of what trains should be able to do anyway, so I welcome it. We do logistically control trains outside of the logistic train mod though, which might be confusing, so let me explain. Train stations have a train limit that set the number of trains that can be sent to the train station and this can be controlled using the base game's logistic network. What we generally end up doing at train unloads is to default the train limit to zero, but if the total amount of a resource at a train stop are below a certain value, set the train limit to one, which will signal to a train that handles that resource to supply the stop with said resource. This is a huge improvement over the default train logic, which is just to always try and drop off the resource if it can. This means that if there are multiple train stops that need the same resource, you generally end up with one stop getting delivered a resource constantly and the others getting supplied nothing because there is no idea of priority across these train stops. What I've been setting up is the first sort of hub for the train-based factory. Stone has two byproducts that can be smelted, sand and quartz. Now that Waz has finished the sand and quartz processing, I'm going to request those resources at two train stops, smelt them into glass and silicon respectively, then provide two load train stops for exporting both finished resources. I'm kinda hurrying, so I copy and paste this setup we've been using for the iron and just use it for both. It isn't ratioed right at all. There will only be enough sand to feed half of the furnaces, but I just wanted to get the processing off the ground and start frying bigger fish. By the time I actually use the glass and silicon, we'll have more than enough. The factory has entered into a new era and progress is speeding up by quite a bit. So far, the mod feels like the devs purposefully extended the amount of belt usage needed in the factory with more intermediates and new parts forcing us to become the master of belts before giving us trains. I get the feeling that trains are going to progress in the same way. I took a look at the tech tree and chemical science is still very far away requiring sophisticated oil and green chip processing to be produced at scale effectively. Chemical science is necessary to unlock the next paradigm shift in construction bots, logistic bots, and roboports. Getting there is going to require many, many train stops handling massive loads of resources, and now is about the time when Waz's expertise really started to pay dividends. Our train designs are just big enough to provide a large amount of resources, small enough to allow for compact train stops, flexible enough to handle multiple types of train stop configurations, and robust enough to prevent train backups and long wait times. Thankfully, half a red belt of coal can feed more than 400 furnaces, so I can use coal from the same belt for the glass and silicon without needing an extra belt of coal belted over to each side. Waz just got done setting up the bullet train, which is fantastic for securing our borders efficiently. Our pollution is looking great. A technique I'm employing here is using a warehouse as a splitter. That might sound weird, but a warehouse will eventually balance across its outputs and has a wide surface area, allowing for easy expansion of its inputs in the future. The single central warehouse then splits evenly into the three warehouses that actually load onto the trains. Generally, belt balancers are accomplished by taking advantage of the fact that splitters send exactly 50% of their input resources to each split. This means you can just math out the splits until each output belt has an equal number of resources. The problem comes in the relationship between inputs and outputs. A balancer with two inputs and two outputs is relatively simple, and I've even memorized how to make one. But a balancer with 8 inputs and 7 outputs is completely different and takes up way more space. 
This means that they don't scale well if you suddenly are producing a ton more resources, hence need more input belts, then the balancer has to be totally redone. Also, they can look cool, but usually end up looking like a janky pile of belts and the variable amount of space they need is a big disadvantage. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk on balancers. The final train stop that's needed is the coal. I found it very satisfying that the coal train will feed both the furnaces and the trains, so any train that has a schedule here doesn't need any extra fuel stop. have it these silicon and glass tops are set up i started with these two because they don't exist on the main belt yet and things that have prerequisites on the main belt have the option of just being added to the main belt although we aspired to completely erase the main belt i'm not sure we'll actually get there mainly because it's massive there are so many things that don't need to be made in bulk that the main belt does a great job of making even some bulk items like steel and concrete are working just fine. The core miner is also really close to the main belt and it's a very convenient place to dump all of the applicable outputs. Maybe that's how this is supposed to go. The main belt was never the enemy. It was there to teach you even though you had plans to betray it. It did its job day in and day out, never a question, never a complaint. And now, not for any compassionate or justice-based explanation, it turns out he's going to live, to survive another day, to create things for you based on its original design. Or we'll nuke it, we'll see. All this stone processing requires more stone, and thankfully there is this conveniently placed gigantic mine with 5 million stone. I set that stone mine up so fast I couldn't even finish my monologue. The time of the trains is truly upon us. Even though I said I didn't need it, I end up rebalancing the quartz inputs here for better throughput. And both resources end up being routed east via belts back to the main belt anyway because it is so convenient. They're going to be used to make solar panels, which we don't yet need an industrial quantity of, so I felt it easier to make a smaller amount of them. And the other resources are available on the main belt. Solar panels are another pillar to our success. They provide free energy during the day, only requiring enough space to place them down. 